Ah, the Nintendo 3DS. One of my favorite consoles ever, and really, gaming's most unique console of all time. I love my 3DS. I mean, 3D without 3D glasses is cool enough, but the library, software of games, and a bunch of remakes, completely remade only and exclusively for the 3DS, really make this a special system. So, if you're watching this video or you were wondering, is it even worth getting a 3DS in 2022, especially with the eShop closing for the 3DS and Wii U next year at March 2023? Well, I can answer that question right now. Yes, it's absolutely worth getting a 3DS. I've been playing mine non-stop since the flip of the calendar year, and there are so many games that I never even explored, and I love my 3DS, that I've just been a joy for me this past calendar year. So, in this video, not only am I going to tell you guys why it's worth getting a 3DS at any time, but we're going to be talking about future hardware prices, what kind of 3DS is right for you. I have four 3DSs on me, I'm going to show you a comparison between the two original models and the two new models, aka the new 3DS and the new Nintendo 3DS XL. I'm going to be talking about capture cards on a 3DS because some people might only like playing things on their original hardware. We're also going to be talking about software titles. We're going to be talking about things like why games are going to get more expensive with the eShop closing, what we have to do with special game cartridges such as this one, which I'll be talking about later. And last but not least, we'll have an in-depth close picture of each 3DS showing all the differences to help you decide what kind of 3DS is right for you and my personal pick for them. Before we jump into everything guys though, please don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell, be notified anytime I put out a new video. If you guys like open opinionated uh, videos like this, or if you just like maybe ending explanation videos, game slash fan theory videos, or Mario World, Kaizo ROM Hacks, Super Mario 64, playthroughs and stuff, this is the right channel for you. We also do a little bit of game reviews. But please guys, don't forget to subscribe, always comment, I'm always available, and love to chat it up. Thank you. So. You know you want a 3DS, and like I said, it's absolutely worth it. I've been playing mine more than my Switch since the flip of the calendar year. But there's a lot of things you need to go. You need to know. First thing you need to know is what kind of 3DS do you want? Do you want a regular 3DS? Do you want a 3DS XL? Do you want a new Nintendo 3DS? Or do you want something from the 2DS line? That again, we will be showing you guys an in-depth comparison between the four 3DSs that I own later on. But, personally, it kind of comes down to choice. I always recommend getting a 3DS versus a 2DS because, one, if you're going to get a 2DS, you can just play, you know, you don't get the choice of 3D, or you can just play something on Citro, which is a 3DS emulator. And while not every game runs 100% smooth or perfectly on it, the option of having 3D is very important to me. 3D can always be turned off. With the 2DS, you never have the option of turning it on or off. Now, the new 2DS XL model is very sleek and considered probably, I would say, around the top three best versions of the 3DS. However, again, I am an advocate for 3D, and uh, yeah, that's where I'm going to leave that uh, debate. So if you decide to get a new 2DS XL, it's the right time to do that, and that's totally, that's fine. It's a great upgrade, especially if you notice you never use the 3D. Now, if we're talking about things like limited edition consoles, right? A Pikachu one or a 20th anniversary Pokemon one. Well, guess what? You're in bad luck here. While the 3DS market is roughly between like $150 to $200, which is roughly what it was. I mean, the MSRP value of a 3DS is like $170, $200, right? At most, $250. Well, that's how, what's basically what you're going to be paying now. However, things like, you know, let's just look at this one. A new Nintendo 3DS XL SNES edition. Out of box, it's probably about a $300, $350, you know, console. Well, if you want everything with it, especially with the code and everything, like here's box code, you're, about, you're looking to spend about $500, $550. And I don't know if that's worth it to you. To me, I really like limited edition stuff, but, you know, if you have the extra money to splurge, and that's the right thing for you. Now, for those who are interested in the capture card, this capture card is built into my original 3DS. Well, that's going to be doubling the price of whatever 3DS you get. Uh, this is not a Katsu Kitty one, that is the most popular and probably the best capture card out there for the 3DS. However, with the capture card market, not only is it a very scarce and limited market, but those who are, you know, a proponent for you have to record it on original hardware and all that, well, be ready to spend a lot more. 
uh, the installation that comes with it. Now, it's very easy, it's simple. It just, you have micro, a micro USB plugs right into your computer and it works perfectly. Just get ready to spend at least double the price of any 3DS for these. I would say, look between 400 to $500. Now, there is an option though, if you guys don't mind hacking your 3DS, you can wirelessly connect to your computer. However, it is not a clean, 100% guaranteed working program. I believe it was connects with an FTP server and you get a good performance. I would, wouldn't say great. It's definitely nothing compared to the capture card, but it's like a 30 FPS. It dips to like 22 and uh, yeah, it, it peaks at 60. So that's kind of all the information for those who are looking to record with your 3DS. You have the option of either hacking or you have the option of getting a physical capture card built into your 3DS, which is awesome. I, I really enjoyed mine. Now that we talked about the prices of the hardware for 3DSs, let's talk about the software. I mean, the 3DS has so many games. I mean, the 3DS is awesome. It's got Mario 3D Land. It's got Link Between Worlds. It's got all, you know, Pokemon X and Y, Sun and Moon, the remakes of or or Oras, Omega Ruby, um, Sapphire, and Guess what? It revived the entire Fire Emblem franchise. It has Fire Emblem Awakening. It has Fire Emblem Faith. It even has a remake of, I believe, some Fire Emblem 2 Shadows of Valencia or something like that. But these are amazing first party games. Then you have top tier remakes. I'm talking about the best remakes of all time might be on the 3DS. They have Ocarina of Time remade. They have Majora's Mask remade, which is the superior version of to play Majora's Mask. They also have things like the 3D Classics, where they remade retro games in full 3D. I'm talking about not like a 3D world, I'm talking about 3D features. Gunstar Heroes, Sonic 1 and 2, Kirby's Adventure. They have these pop-out features that are so amazing. Or they have an in-depth diorama kind of feature. And it's mind-blowing. It's like... You can always replay these games. Switch has, you know, it has the NES and SNES Virtual Console, but they will never be remade or in the same style as the 3DS versions were, and you may never see them again. Even if a 3DS Virtual Console ever comes out, guess what? You will never get the same 3D features that the 3DS will provide you. And that is why the 3DS is worth it. The software on the Nintendo eShop for some of these games being remade, well, it's amazing, and I really do recommend you guys check it out sometime, because you just can't, I can't tell you how different Excitebike looks. In Excitebike 3D versus regular Excitebike, yes, they're both the same game, but it's completely different when you look at it on your 3DS. Now, we did talk about software and stuff, but we didn't talk about the main thing, cartridge games. This game is Professor Layton versus Phoenix Wright, the DS crossover dream. And as I pulled it out of my 3DS, this game right now, if we were looking for a physical copy of it, I got bad news for you. It's about 200, 250% more than its original MSRP value. It was about a $40 game. If you want to get this game without the box, just the cartridge I showed you, get, looking, get ready to spend around $85 to $100. But, the good news is the eShop is still open. And on the eShop, the game is $30. That option goes away next year at this time, and you're gonna have to really make your jump into the 3DS now if you're looking to play these games. Again, without hacking or getting them through illegal means. So, now is the right time to get your 3DS. That is why I'm trying to say, not only is the software library great, but cartridges are expensive. Scalpers are out there, collectors are more than rampant. Secondhand markets are, are going to be the only way to get these games. I mean, you can't go to GameStop anymore and get a 3DS. I had a friend who tried lat two weeks ago. They don't even sell 3DS games anymore. So this might be your only option in way is through eBay. And as time goes on and demand grows higher, the supply only gets smaller and smaller. And therefore, the price will go up. That's, uh, that's kind of my piece on software stuff. Uh, in a future video... We will be talking about the must-play games for your 3DS. The must-own and must-play games. So don't get... So, you know, that's why I'm saying subscribe. You guys get to see all my favorite games, plus other games I totally 1 million percent recommend to play on your 3DS. Now, we're going to get a closer look at each 3DS. You guys are going to see the difference between the four I own, why 
you may like one versus the other. Maybe this helps you upgrade your 3DS. Maybe this makes you just get the same exact one. Or maybe, you know, you change your mind and you don't want it after looking at it, but you just get a 2DS. So let's check that out. Okay, so I got the four 3DSs I own here. The original 3DS, the th original 3DS XL, new Nintendo 3DS, and a new Nintendo 3DS XL. You guys kind of already know the differences between the two, such as things like a ZR button, ZL button, and the, and the fact that the original 3DS and the original 3DS XL use standard SD cards versus the micro SD cards of the new Nintendo 3DSs. The other thing to talk about them is that you can replace the shells for the new models. They easily come off, as you guys can see like here. Well, not easily, you'd have to take a screwdriver. I just have them loose for you guys for the video. So that's where you put your micro SD card and your, you know, other stuff. Now, what I'm gonna be showing you guys actually is kind of what they look like in my hand. I have generally, I'd say average or smaller size hands if I were to compare it to anybody in my family. But yeah, I'm gonna show you guys the, what they kind of look like, what each console minor differences is that might affect your gameplay wise and other little tidbits and facts. So here is probably the thing most people are interested in. This is an original 3DS, but it has a capture card built into it. So this is what the capture card looks like. This is not a Katsu Kitty capture card, but a micro USB goes into here, connects directly to my computer and gives me perfect no delay response on my 3DS. If you guys are wondering what this is, this is Reggie Fisame's autograph on my 3DS. So quick things about the original 3DS, it is really glossy, which a lot of, which a lot of the new Nintendo 3DS XLs are. But it's really glossy, has probably the best D-pad out of any of them. So if you're a D-pad user, this might be the one you wanna get. It is the smallest of the bunch, even compared to the new Nintendo 3DS XL. It has a different slider compared to most. It doesn't have a solid click when you hit the bottom versus top, though you can see a color difference when it goes to 3D. And it has the best stylus out of all of them. It's a very fine metal and extending stylus for them. Other than that, I would say it is pretty comfortable and the easiest SD, uh, SD card slider out there. It's very comfortable, very easy to use, and Really, ironically, Nintendo got it right on the first one. I think taking off the backs for these two for the micro SD is annoying. And the, new, and the original 3DS XL has a very horrible feeling SD card slider. Other than that, solid shoulder buttons. They were like made of this uh, hard metal. You could hear kind of a clicking noise to it. Do I recommend this 3DS? No, not really. I would say the original 3DS, if you're a big fan of the DS Lite, this is the closest you'll get to it. This is the upgrade of the DS Lite in the 3DS version very solid, very small in my hand. I think that I was least comfortable playing most of my games on this. I know I have to record games through this 3DS sometimes, and honestly, I wish I got the capture card on any of the other ones. But if you don't care about screen size and you have smaller hands, or you really like the DS Lite's D-pad, with this is a really good circle button, and you just wanna play games, just DS style, portability and comfortability makes the original 3DS a very good choice. Now, this is the original 3DS XL. This was my 3DS the whole time. This is like my, my favorite one. I still have my original, all my, my stuff on here. Now, comparing it really quickly, if we're gonna compare this to the original 3DS, let's actually just put the uh, same game on. I believe I have 3D land on all these. Now, here's what they would look like side by side. As you can see, the 3DS XL is actually a monster. It's really large, okay? but. If you're gonna be traveling and playing this a lot, DS XL, while it's not as easy to carry, does have, you know, better visuals, better sound, and, you know, better image quality. However, that's not saying much considering the original 3DS image quality is not the greatest. And these are both TN displays. If anyone's looking for an IPS display, you need to get a 3DS after 2015, which I will get into because I actually have a double screen IPS, very rare. Um, this 20th anniversary one and I have a top screen IPS but a bottom screen TN here so showing the two off the DS the for the 3ds XL the d pads kind of worse I'm not a fan of it you might like this but it's got this concave d-pad as you guys can see while well, it makes the tops or the edges clicky I'm not a big fan of it. it doesn't feel as comfortable but the slider is just as good this is just a very worn out slider so pay it no mind the home start select button is pretty weak so that's not too much. Shoulder buttons are just as good. While they're not that metal clicky feeling, they are very large and comfortable. They kind of remind me of like GameCube or Wii shoulder buttons. 
And other than that, slider, easier to take out, less higher quality, but in a perfect slot spot and always slides in and out. This I really love, but if you're gonna get an XL, I don't recommend getting an original 3DS XL. If you're gonna be getting an XL, you wanna get a new Nintendo 3DS XL or a new 2DS XL. Now for, I'm gonna go, actually, I'm gonna stay in the XL family. This is a new Nintendo 3DS XL. So we're gonna compare it to another 3DS XL. This is, again, new Nintendo 3DS XL. You can tell from the tab, where the start button, start and select button are, where the home button is. I mean, there's a lot of differences, obviously. But if we're, we're just here to look for the size comparisons and look at the size comparisons here, you can see they're roughly the same. I mean, there's not really much of a difference other than that, this has obviously a faster processor, but it's just got a little bit of an improved D-pad. Uh, it obviously has the ZR and ZL shoulder buttons, but yeah, a lot of new 3DS XLs are glossy. Just This is the Super Nintendo Amazon exclusive 3DS XL, and uh, it's probably the only matte version of of the new 3DS XL family. If you're looking to get a larger DS or you want to get a recording. A lot of new 3DS XLs actually have the capture card in it. So this is probably the model you're going to get. I, again, recommend an XL model if you're going to be doing a lot of gaming on it. This is a very solid choice. And honestly, you can never go wrong with a new Nintendo 3DS XL. Now, last but not least, we have the pride and joy of my lot, the new Nintendo 3DS. This is the 20th anniversary Pokemon edition, but you know, obviously you could just take off the shells and then pretend you have one as well. Now, while I'm not a big fan of the slider and the power button on this one, this is, uh, I really lucked out. I, again, not a fan of the D-pad. The slider's nice, the buttons, are, buttons feel great, but I lucked out and I got a double IPS screen. As you guys can see how clear both of my screens are. These are both double IPS versus something like, a, I'll show you guys the original 3DS, which is actually a little bit smaller than the uh, new Nintendo 3DS. You guys see there's a little bit of a larger screen there. I don't remember, it's only like 0.4 inches or something like that. But as you guys can see, I will go to 3D land just to show you guys a direct comparison of colors. Now, here is 3D land if you're looking at them straight up. As you guys can see, the one on the left is a little bit blurry. Now, if we go all the way down, like you're like normally playing a 3DS, you guys can kind of see how bright and beautiful the colors are. That's because they're more vibrant on an IPS screen versus a TN. And <clears throat> most 3DSs after 2015 will probably have a top IPS screen, but I got lucky and I got it on the bottom. And uh, just to show you guys another 3DS post-2015 to show you guys I'm not crazy. This is what a... 3DS with one IPS screen on the top. I'll go to the, uh, let's see, what will I go to here? I'll go to the Me Maker. And then here we wanna go to Me Maker. Okay, as you guys can see, both of the screens beautiful when we go for the top over there. At, oops. Okay, that's cause they're both IPS. However, on the bottom, you guys can kind of see, look how you could make clear which one has mine. And it's not because the screen is larger and all that. That's because this bottom is a TN display versus this being an IPS display. The only bad thing about this is my battery flies down after like two hours and all that. But yeah, uh, now if you are, I guess if you have very small hands or something like that, or you're like, oh, I really kind of enjoy this. This is how it feels in my hands. If it fits perfectly. Now it's not as luxurious as a new, as an XL model, but this is very serviceable. They are a bit harder to find versus the new 2DS XL and the new th Nintendo 3DS XL. But I recommend really getting an XL. It's probably the best version out there. It's uh, very comfortable to hold. Really like, as you guys can see, I'm holding in the back. You have both your shoulder runs all the time. I mean, it's, it's just fantastic. You know, the extra space is nice. The extra screen room is really nice and everything is so responsive and beautiful on the XL models. So this would be my number one choice, then the new 2DS XL and then the new Nintendo 3DS. Unfortunately, the original models aren't as good, but if you're going to choose anything out of any of the 3DSs, like if you really, really want something that's close to the original DS Lite, 
Okay, this is your best chance. This actually looks and feels like a DS. And when I played with my DS Lite last year to play Kirby Squee Squad, I don't know why I didn't play it on this 3DS, but it's, it feels just like my 3D, uh, my, like my DS Lite. So if you're a big fan of that, stick with this. But if you're looking to upgrade or look for something new, I would say get the XL model. The XL model is beautiful, and you guys know my reasonings why you should always be getting a 3DS versus a 2DS. And you guys just checked it out. I appreciate that. Now, overall, you guys know the new Nintendo 3DS XL is the best version of any of them. Obviously, you get a beautiful screen, beautiful huge screen, faster processor, and stuff I've already said before. But the thing I wanted to go over is, besides recommending that, I would say the 3DS is something that was really special, and I think just that everybody needs to kind of take a look at their library, play whatever games they may have missed or may have not, because we're never going to get these games again on any type of virtual console in the same way. And with that happening, I just say the 3DS is something special, it really brought a lot of great memories. Street Pass was awesome, Spot Pass was amazing, and it was a unique experience that I hope Nintendo one day can kind of replicate and recreate. So I hope this video guys helped you, I hope this video helped you guys make your decision on the 3DS, why you should get it, and I hope to see you guys in future videos, thank you. And of course, last but not least, don't forget to comment, like, share. And of course, last but not least, comment, like, share, subscribe. But of course, let me know what 3DS model did you choose? I hope, did this help you? Did you actually upgrade your 3DS? Or are you just going to repair your 3DS? You're going to get the same exact model. Let me know what kind of 3DS. Or you never got one. Now you're just going to get one for the first time. And what's going to be your first game? Guys, I love my 3DS. Great system. And it's really something every Nintendo fan should experience.